Hi and welcome to Retro Tech Guardian. Today, Ted and I will be showing off uh, a little TV radio that came in a bag, which is uh, quite unusual. So you can see the carry handle goes through the bag there. So yeah, so I bought this little unit recently, um, only a few months ago. Paid thirty pound plus postage. I do remember seeing these things when I was growing up, this particular one. Uh, I always really liked it. And uh, so, yeah, someone came up. It was a decent price. Like I say, it came with a bag. I assume it's an original bag. I honestly don't know. Um, if anybody knows if it is the original bag, then please get in touch and let me know. I assume it is because everything does seem to fit just nice. It's got a bit of a denim look to it. And uh, all right. Okay, so let's have a quick look inside the side pocket and see what we get. So in here, oh, a bit tight. Well, very tight. Okay, in here we have the original JVC power adapter. It's a, there we go, it's here, and it's a 12 volt output at just, um, oh, it's actually a 9 volt output, ah, okay, now I understand why this is there in a minute, so it's a 9 volt output at half an amp, um, it says 12 volt here auto plug AP23, now I have that in the bag, I'll show that in a second. And I did wonder. Because just here, it says DC in 12 volt. Now this is a DC input, 12 volt, use only the AP23. So I assume that that input 12 volt will be brought down to 9 volt on this lead. I actually thought that might have been just a simple pass through and I wondered why would you have to have that? But there you go, if you actually read the bottom of it, it'll explain it. So in here, as I say, we have the original JVC AP23 car adapter. And as you can see, that would fit in there. And you'd have to still have to have that connected, even though you were in the car or caravan or whatever you were in that had a 12 volt plug. So you still would have had that connected. And now I tested this for voltage before I had this powered up. If you watch the very first video, you will see this unit powered up. Um, but just to have a quick look, let's just see exactly how they get that down. So we'll undo this screw here. All I did when I tested it was just test the voltage output before I actually connected it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that there was actually the right power going in. Now, I haven't plugged this in for a while. So, okay. Now, it does look... Yeah, it does look like there must be a 9 volt regulator or a way of, or a big resistor to bring down the power there. So yeah, it's not a simple straight through connector. All right, okay, well, I just wanted to see that and check. So now we know. So. We'll put this back together. There we go. Right. Okay, now let's get the actual unit out of the bag itself. Come on, Ted, you'll have to get over here out the way a minute. Okay, so... Another thing I notice with the bag when I get this out, we'll have a quick look at the bag first, is another thing I noticed 
was there's a little popper at the bottom here. And I can't for the life of me think what would pop to it. Because they reach there. So if anybody else has got one of these and they know what that is for, please again comment, get in touch, email, get in touch, comment, whatever you want. And please let me know what that little thing there should be for. Anyway, here we have the main item. Um, so for the model number, it's uh, a JVC or Japan Victor Company or Victor Company of Japan. 3050 and UK because it's obviously a UK spec. And um, there we go. That's the power adapter, which is that one. Manufactured at Yokohama Plant, Victor Company of Japan Limited. 12.3, come, oh, I wouldn't do that justice. But made in Japan with the serial number, which I think you can just about see. There. Now, I'm having a look at the serial number there, and it's got 071. 00781 so I'm not sure when this particular one was made um, I know that it originally came out uh, as far as I can tell in America in the States in uh, approximately 1976 uh, that's as much information as I can find I found out quite a few bits there is um, on the in the link in the description below there'll be some uh, links to websites where i found some information about it but just for reference that was me in 1976 complete with y fronts leaning against a tree and i believe and this was at bracken beacons in south wales back in 1976 and of course that would have been the year when we had that really hot summer so Anyway, I just thought I'd add that in. That was me. Yes, Ted, don't laugh at me, wife friends. Right, so here we have the unit itself. So, again, it's got everything I love about these units. It's got the chrome look. It's got metal, metal finished buttons. It's got toggle switches. Toggle switches are the best. So, yep, this is... Uh, this is the unit itself at the front. So we've got AFC, FM for FM radio. So FM automatic frequency control, I believe. Uh, your volume level, your radio band, it has FM, short wave and medium wave. No long wave, unusually. And then you have separate bass and travel controls on here instead of just tone. Then you've got power on, off and charge because you could get a rechargeable battery that would fit in this plug your mains adapter in and that would charge the batteries you've got your contrast and then you've got your selector for uhf and this one also has vhf frequencies which was very early and i believe if this came out in 76 it would have been very close to the date that they switched off the vhf radio i'm not exactly sure on the date on that now but i'm pretty sure it'd be very close and then obviously radio at the top and then you have a tv tuning dial here so that is just purely for the tv there you go and then on this side we have your tuning wheel for your radio and as you can see the whole unit has this that's not broken or anything that's actually the uh, shape it is and when it's like that it almost angles the tv slightly up towards you Okay, now here we have a DC 9 volt jack, which is obviously where this plugs in. We have a, a timer. Okay, what's that? Just bear with me. Yeah, timer. Then record an earphone. So that must be audio in timer now i'm not sure what timer would be now on this side we have our extension aerial connections so we have 
uh, FM radio and uh, UHF TV connections. So they're just screws. Undo the screws, fasten them down. You've got an AGO selector, vertical hold and horizontal hold. Oh, no, you haven't. Bear with me. I can't read that even with my glasses on. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, you've got the height of the screen on there. And V on. And then here you have your vertical hold, horizontal hold, and your brightness. And there's also a little switch of and tension antenna or rod antenna just on the back now this is your the back of the unit yes it does need a clean i still haven't cleaned it yet uh, that will be done soon but i always like to show them off as i get them just so you can see them now this takes six d cell batteries which is nine volts uh, there's also a rechargeable packet mentions in there now, I don't see the other, normally there's a little charging hole with, oh, there it is. So, if you can just see that in that corner there, those two holes there, that's where you would plug in your charger, your, your rechargeable battery pack. So, you throw your rechargeable battery pack in there. It also has a little flap here, and believe it or not, it still has its original earphones. Now, they're not something I'm going to be putting in my ear because uh, they do actually look like they've been used. So, um, yeah, they certainly need a bit of a clean-up. And they do look like they've been used, so I won't be using them. But it's just really nice to have them because um, that means everything's original and I quite like that. So, let's get that back on the top of there. he says there you go okay we'll leave that off for a sec the battery cover so yeah so and then also you have the the aerial now i like this aerial design it's got a little cover on there look you can see when you do that so you don't see it swivel and i quite like that um rod antenna obviously right on the very base you have the model number and again what we saw earlier and then on the top, you have your speaker grill. Now, I think I read in this on this, it's um, a five-inch driver, which is quite big for one of these units, and especially quite big considering this is quite a small unit itself. Um, if we have a look at Ted for the TV screen, he's three inches tall, so it's a three-inch screen, which is actually quite small for one of these. And then. Let's turn that the right way around so you can read it. So we have a tuning indicator and battery indicator and a light button here. You press that and this lights up. Um, so that'll tell you how well you're tuned and that'll tell you how good your batteries are. And there's obviously your radio frequency. So FM there, short wave there, medium wave there. And uh, yeah, so right, what we're going to do is power it up. We might as well have a little look at it going. Now, just bear with me because I've actually got to go and turn on the Xbox so that we can get a signal to the TV because, stupidly, I forgot to turn that on first. So, there we go. That's on. And as you can see, the little blue light in the right-hand corner, that means that the uh, amplified aerial is on. So, okay, so we have a power lead here, actually we'll plug this into the side of the unit first, so it goes in on this side, and as you can see it's got a very similar attachment to the Sony one I showed you, so they will go in those slots there, they'll fall downwards, and then when that's in, Again, that stops it from falling off, if you can see that. Just when that pushes forward, it butts up against this, and then it can't fall out. I assume that's why they do it. It makes sense to me, so, yeah, I assume so. 
Now then, so what we need to do is plug this in. So let's plug that in there. Okay, now we'll turn the volume right down. I want it on UHF down there. So if we turn it on, there we go, the little screen appears. So now if you'd have watched the uh, first video I did, which was my introduction, you would have obviously have seen this. I'll put it closer to the area just to make sure. You would have seen this up and running. So there we go. That's the little Xbox Live. Now, is that the right channel? Because maybe that needs to be the other side of that. Looks like we're getting a little bit of interference. That's better. Right. Right, now I need to turn the brightness right down or you'll struggle to see the screen. Now, where's the brightness? Right, bear with me. So brightness is that last one. So if I turn the brightness down, you can see it better. And if I turn the contrast up, you'll see it better there as well. There you go. So it does work. I mean, obviously, there's no sound on the Xbox, copyright reasons again. I actually tried to connect up my Arcos to my setup. And I don't know if it's the AV lead I've got or the Arcos itself. When you tune it in, you just don't get a clear picture. So it's not being sent through clear. Obviously, the TV will pick up whatever signal it gets. So I need to have a look at that and see if there's another way. I did have some music on there from the previous video where um, the guy kindly gave me permission to use his music on my videos. Um, so I will find a way. Uh, I'll probably end up burning them onto CD and then playing them through the Xbox for now. It's just you can hear that hum in the background and that's the Xbox running and unfortunately that will be there. So anyway, uh, so now we will try the radio. So we'll turn it to FM. We'll turn the volume up a little. Now if I can find anything here, where I live is really bad for radio stations. Oh, actually, turn it to radio, it would help. There you go. There you go, so that's on. Right, we'll turn that down. Now you can see here, You've got a signal strength here. So if we press the little light, I don't know if that shows up for you. Yeah, it does. So if I press the little light, you can see it's got a decent signal there. And if we flick that to battery, obviously that'll go all the way over because we are plugged into the mains. So, so as you can hear, and you've got separate bass controls and treble. And it is quite loud. So, yeah, and that's basically all the features there is here. So, not really much else I can show you. Like I say, it's a shame. Um, I suppose we could try the shortwave radio, see if it picks anything up on that. I do have a lot of... Xbox, etc., running in the background. I think I've got too much interference. And there we go.
No, can't seem to get much on the shortwave. Okay, let's try medium wave. Oh. Oh, that's a nice noise. Yeah, I've got a lot of interference for AM and shortwave in here. There we go. So, medium wave as well works. So everything seems to work on it. Um, obviously, I don't know if the charge does. I do not have that unit for this. So, uh, there's no power switch on the actual power adapter. It is purely just on this. Right, now as ever, let's have a whip of the top off and let's see what it looks like inside. Okay. Now again, this is an old CRT TV. So there'll be quite a bit of power on the back of that little unit, even though it's very small, it'll still give you a hell of a kick. Um, so we will be careful. Hey, up, Ted's committed suicide. Come back here, Ted. Come back up there. Right. So let's have a quick look at it before we start undoing things. It looks like we have three screws there. One, two, three on that side, three on that side. We also have some round the handle, but I don't think I'll need to undo those to take it apart. It looks like it is just those six. So let's quickly whip these off. And uh, let's have a little look inside. Like I say, in 1976, I believe this one might be 81 because of the serial number. Um... But in 1976, I was six years old. So, I am in my 50s. Just. Actually, 51 next month. So, yeah, so, uh, like I say, this picture of me. There we go, Ted. You can stand next to me when I was a kid. Yep, I was six years old there. I've still got a bit of curly hair on there, which I lost a long time ago. I've got some nice little brown flares on and a little red skin tight top. Obviously, I was six years old. I wasn't really dressing myself that well as such. I just got given the clothes I got, but then so did everybody else. So, uh, Yeah, I do remember we used to go to Brecon Beacons a lot, especially in the summer. Uh, I actually lived in South Wales at the time, in a place called Port Talbot, which uh, obviously I don't anymore. Well, I say obviously, uh, I don't anymore. Now then, how does this come apart? Very carefully, I'd say. Now, is it going to be the base that comes up? I'll tell you what, let's take those earphones out because they're adamant they're going to come out anyway. Right. Wow, that is very compact. There's an awful lot going in there for such a small machine. You can just about see... Let me just turn that around. Be very careful not to touch any of the circuitry at the top. You can just about see the speaker here. <coughs> Excuse me. Just about see the speaker there. Um, and that's the back of the tube, just there. If you can see that, just there. That's the back of the little tube. So the tube runs from that front screen, which is about there, all the way to about there. So that's probably about seven inches long. And uh, actually, it's got a lot more in it than I thought. It's uh, very full, considering, I think I believe that's got more than what the Sony had, and that has a cassette player. But, um, right, well, we won't be taking any of these off. I'm not going to 
risk getting an electric shock today if I was to take that off I'd obviously uh, discharge the tube first and some of the bigger capacitors on there um, yeah just all sorts of weird and wonderful things on there So how does the aerial on this one make its connection the rod and the tenor? Um, oh, it's actually wired to ground this one. Slightly different from the other one. So, yeah, uh, that's it. Not much to see really in there. A bit disappointing. You can't see any of the uh, components. I really don't fancy lifting that up just yet. Uh, maybe if I'd left it off for a few days, I might have lifted it. There is a screw there, another one there. Um, but I'll leave it for now. Maybe we can do another video in the future where we lift the top off and have a good look at the tube. Um, like I say, I did find quite a few links out about this, uh, information about this unit. Uh, there is a couple of links to, I think it's radiomuseum.org. And... Um, they have uh, the name of the tube and the code number for the tube itself that's in this. So we can double check that against what I can see when we take this off. But um, yeah, it does look like it hinges there, doesn't it? So. Yeah, it does look like it just hinges there it does feel like it's stuck down a bit more at the front here just coming away here and actually that screw looks like that's just holding that little motherboard onto that one little motherboard little board oh, there is a screw in the middle there now i think we'll leave it for another day we'll wait until that discharges properly and we'll have a good look in there Anyway, so let's get this back on, nice and carefully. He says. Okay, that doesn't want to go back in very easily. No wires in the way there, no wires in the way there. Why don't you want to go back on? Ah, there you go. So that back's got to go on first. It is rocking there for some reason. Just here. What's it rocking on? Doesn't, <coughs> doesn't immediately make sense but you can see what it's rocking on is it that wire there on that post See what it is. That wire there, it's rocking on. So we just need to push that very carefully in there, like so. All right, now let's try it. Okay, uh, I need to try and get it straight. Seems to be stuck on something. Aha, there we go. There we go. Just clips in there. Aha. So that needs to go. That's 
right. I will get it soon. So that needs to go in there. There you go. That's the one. Okay, luckily all the screws are the same length. I did notice that by the way when I was taking them out. So it won't matter where they live on here. They're all the same thread, all the same length. So just make sure that closes down properly on there. Yep. Let's have a look at that one. Yep, that just looks better. Look, it's lined up there where it wasn't before. Okay, that's it. That's it. Yeah, it is it. Just making sure. Okay, <clears throat> then we got this one in. So, I've got um, a couple of different ideas for some projects coming up soon. Um, I'm not going to give too much away. Um, I've got an item come in uh, for next week's video, which will be an unboxing video. Of a, uh, an, a of a TV radio cassette player um, and, and usually it's a colour TV radio cassette player you don't see many of those uh, it's not in the best of condition from what I can see from the photos and everything I won't honestly know until I get it um, <clears throat> which is why I thought we might do some upgrades to it, but I'm not going to say what, but watch out for that video because that will be coming soon. Um, and we'll be bringing a, one of these, but with a cassette player, uh, into the 21st century. Um, probably be a course or a series of videos, probably over about four or five weeks. We'll add something new every week. There will be a lot of taking it apart and soldering parts in and and um